go. What's going on guys? I'm Mike from Mobox and this time we're going to be talking about how to make this vaporwave or synthwave type animation. The first part will be producing it. The second part will be trying to make it to loop. I just want to let you know though before we get started is that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. We'll have a word from them in a little bit but anyways let's just jump into After Effects and create this vaporwave type animation. So here we're in After Effects and I'm going to start by creating a circle. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool holding alt to make sure it's circular. I guess I could move it into the center by using the align tool. For the fill type, I want to make sure it's set to linear gradient, but I'm going to change these colors and settings here. So for white, I'm going to make it red. For black, I'm going to leave it black, but for the black opacity, I'm going to set it to like 80. And I'm going to bring this down. Actually, I want it down here and bring this up. Okay, I'm just gonna hit S on the keyboard and scale this up just a bit. Next up, I'm gonna be using a free plugin from Video Copilot called Saber. So if you don't have it, you're gonna to wanna to download that. But I'm just gonna start by creating a layer, new solid, and I'm gonna name this Saber 1. Set the color to like, I don't know, blue, something different. Hit OK. Now the color of, the la of this layer doesn't matter, it's just setting my label here on the layer and I'm going to look for the effect called Saber. Saber is like a super cool effect um, and it's completely free. There's so many different presets here for you to choose from. We're gonna be using two different ones in this, but um, to start with, I'm just gonna use default. So I'm gonna start by creating an ellipse mask on this Saber layer, so make sure the layer's selected. Again, holding Alt, create my mask, and I'm gonna to try to align the mask as best as I could to the center of this composition. I'm gonna end up centering it later. I just don't want too much to be masked out, um, cropped out on the edges of this layer. So I can then put my shape layer again beneath it. And under the saber, I'm gonna set a few settings. So for customized core, I want the core type to be layer masks. That way I get the core actually around the outside. And I'm gonna need like four different copies of this. So I will duplicate this once right now and change this name to Saber mask, but I'm gonna like ignore this layer for right now and hide it and lock it because we're gonna need it later, but these settings are just perfect for that layer. And yeah, there's no need to redo this up later. So for Saber, I'm gonna toggle my switches and modes until I get my mode layer here. And I'm gonna set this to screen. Hit S on the keyboard and scale this up till it's around the outside of the layer. So Right away, I need to center this. So I'm gonna make sure the anchor point is in the center of that mask and move it to the center. So that way when I scale it, it's kind of proportional and appropriately sized. Now I'm gonna adjust some of the settings here. Under start, side, start size, I'm gonna leave it at 100. For end size, I'm gonna bring it down to zero. For my end offset, I'm gonna set it to 40. So it'll come down about 40% of the way. Now I'm gonna duplicate this layer. So my start size to zero and set my end size to 100. Turn my offset back to 100 for end, but I set my start offset to 60. That makes it symmetrical. Um, and whoa, I set that end size to 200. I want it to be 100. So now we get something that looks like that, which already looks pretty cool. In fact, you could just render that out and that looks like synthwave. Anyways, we'll just continue though. And under flicker, I'm gonna set this to like 20. And as long as these random seeds are the same, it should look fine. Okay, so this should flicker just very minorly. Maybe I'll set this to like 50. So that looks pretty cool. Yeah, let's just pause the video here for a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're constantly launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. If you're uncertain about what's next, a creative challenge or productivity class may be a helpful structure for setting small goals and feeling a fulfilling sense of accomplishment. For example, this amazing course on Cinema 4D. Gustavo goes step-by-step step showing you how to achieve this gorgeous 80s-inspired aesthetic. 
The first 1,000 people to use the link down in the description will get a two month premium membership for free. Thank you so much for Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the tutorial. Now I'm going to create my little planet interior. I already have a planet texture that I had purchased. Um, if I could remember where I got it from, I'll download, I'll put a link down in the description, but um, you could probably do something similar to this with just shape layers. But with the planet, it just is a texture, an easy texture. You could probably just pull a texture off unsplash.com. Uh, maybe for the project file that I put on Patreon, I'll do that. So I'm gonna drop my planet down into a new composition and add an effect called Turbulent Displace. This one should be one everybody knows a lot about. But for the displacement type, I'm gonna set it to horizontal displacement and crank up the amount and crank up the size. Obviously not so big that it creates holes in the planet. And I'm gonna add a, a fast blur. Set it to like two, just to soften it up a little bit. And now I could drag this planet layer, which I'll rename to planet. And name this one tutorial. And I'm just gonna drag the planet in and look for CC sphere. Drag it onto the planet texture. For lighting, I'm gonna set this to zero and I'm gonna just bring the radius up. And I'm gonna just bring this right underneath my shape layer. And for the shape layer, I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and bring the opacity down. So now we have our planet, symbol as that. So for this planet, I will add some motion to it. So I'm gonna add some rotation. So you'll see the seam there. I just wanna make it so that the seam's not, not visible and make it rotate. I'm gonna bring the rotation up a bit on the X and Z, just so it's not completely perfectly spinning horizontally to me. So that looks pretty cool. Um, remember my saber mask down here, I'm going to add kind of a weird geometrical background here. So I'm gonna go layer new solid and I'm gonna name this CC ball action after the effect that I'm gonna use and set it to white. And I'm gonna look for an effect called CC ball action and just drag it and drop. Bring the ball size down, like really tiny. And I'm gonna mess with the scatter here. So I want this to basically look like a geometrical star field in the background that then scatters to make it look like it's more realistic and then kind of zip back into this geometrical shape. Um, I think that'll give a kind of a cool effect. One thing before I do that though, I should probably just create my background. I'm just gonna make a solid black as a background and then move it to the bottom. I should have named it just background. And for the CC ball action, I'm gonna use this saber mask as my Luma mask. So I'm only really able to see it around the outside. And I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard and scale this up. I didn't scale this one up the same time I scaled those one up, so I need that. So I'm gonna add a slider control to the CC ball action. And there's probably multiple ways to do this, but this is the thing, this is the way that I wanted it to look so it didn't look so um, canned, I guess I would say. So I'm gonna hold Alt and hit Scatter and type wiggle one comma, and I'm gonna pick whip that slider. So basically I want this to wiggle in the amount, well, once per second, and I'm going to set keyframes on this slider to like zero, five, then zero. Hmm. Ah, there was a missing bracket. And for some reason, this didn't tell me that there was a missing bracket. So let's see how this looks. It kind of goes and comes back. So I think that that looks pretty cool. Hit you on the keyboard and I'm just gonna hold alt on this slider and type loop out with just two brackets. But I'm gonna set another keyframe at zero. Er, okay, let me remove that first. Set another keyframe at zero. 
and I'll show you why in a second. Um, it was kind of just bouncing and I wanted it to kind of hold for a little bit. Okay, so I think that looks pretty cool. Um, one other thing, I can maybe add another saber to this. So maybe for this saber mask, I'll duplicate it and bring it up top. Make sure it's set to screen. And I want to look for one called cellular. Make it visible, of course. Whoa, that looks pretty cool and crazy. Guess these weren't centered. And I'm going to change the color to like pink. And maybe bring the halo size down. Or actually, it's not the core that I want, it's the glow. So I'm going to bring the glow intensity down. Whoa. Okay. There's a lot of crazy effects here. So it might be easier if I just hit T on the keyboard and just bring the transparency down. Now this is going to be cut off on the bottom, so not a huge deal. So I'm going to start doing the water now. So I'm going to start with a layer, new adjustment layer, and I'm going to move the anchor point to the top and pull it down to the center. And I want to add a couple effects to this. The first is a turbulent displace. And I'm going to set it again to horizontal. I'm going to bring up, uh, maybe bring down the size. Maybe increase the amount. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a mirror effect. Put it on top. Move it to the center of my composition, which is 960 by 540. And I'm going to set this to 90. So this will reverse and mirror my image. Now, this of course was a sphere, so technically the bottom and the top could have been the same, but all of the details you would add up here would not get mirrored. So that looks pretty cool. And now I'm just going to add a camera lens blur to this. So I'm going to start by creating a new shape, new rectangle. But for my fill, I wanted to start at white, end at black, but set my opacity to 100. And I'm just going to create a new rectangle. And again, center this up into the comp. And I'm going to use this, I'm going to rename this layer as my camera lens blur map and lock it and make it invisible. And I'm going to look for a camera, camera lens blur, add it to my adjustment layer. And I'm going to set my layer to my blend map or my blur map, effects and masks, and then crank up the blurriness. So what this basically is telling, what the map is telling it is basically wherever there's white, blur, wherever there's black, don't blur. So that's why we're getting no blur back here, but more blur up front. So I think that that looks pretty cool. Now to animate this. So we already have the planet animating. We have that star field animating. Now to animate the water, I'm just going to add a turbulent displace um, holding alt, select evolution, and set this to um, time times maybe 10. See, that might be too fast, but we could play with it. And it's actually takes too long to render. We'll lower the resolution. So that's pretty slow. I'm going to crank this up to maybe 20. And now that I can see this, this glow, I feel like the glow is kind of a little bit too bouncy and I feel like the cellular is moving a little too fast. So I'm going to adjust some of these settings here. So this is my solar cell, my cell effect. And let's see if I can reduce the speed. I may not be able to change the speed, which is okay. I think it looks fine. I'm also rendering this at low resolution, so it might be more visible, but I do want the flicker to be reduced. So there we have it. That's how you would, or that's how I would do this. Um, last thing, I'm just going to hit repeat edges. So I get my blur all the way down to the edges. 
Okay, so for those of you out there that wanna take this to the next level, I'm gonna now show you how to loop this animation. So there's a couple things that we need to do to be able to loop this. First things first, I guess we could loop this water. So under Turbulent Displace, under Evolutionary Options, I'm gonna select Cycle Evolution. I need this to end at a full 360 degree loop. So I need to make sure that this evolution property ends at 360. So I'm gonna trim this comp down to 10 seconds. So we'll loop this over 10 second periods. It's a nice whole number, it's easy. So I need to set this to 36. So basically time, time times 36, so at 10, 10 seconds times 36 is 360, that's a full loop. So you can see there. Okay, now we need to loop the planet. So I'm gonna kind of cheat, and I think you're gonna see that I'm gonna be cheating a lot in this, this process because it's a 10 second loop, what else do you want? Basically, I need this beginning frame to match the end point of the last frame. So what I did was I moved this to the end, I duplicated it, Control D, brought this all the way up to the end here, so where I could just see barely one frame, grabbed it, pulled it out, and now hit T on the keyboard, set opacity, and bring the opacity down. So then it reveals the one beneath it. And it happens so slowly that you almost can't even tell that it didn't loop. Now the other thing that needs to be looping is the white little dots in the background. And basically it starts at zero, I need this to end at zero. So I could drag these and hold alt and drag them until I'm able to hit zero, which is about right there. So you see I'm looking right here at this slider, again. I need this end bit to be zero. Now I could do the math and crunch the numbers, or I could just drag this end point until the end point hits zero. Okay, right there. So now those dots should end kind of in that grid alignment and start in that grid alignment. Ending at the grid, starting at the grid. Okay, the last thing we need to get to loop is this pink smoke. And I'll tell you, I've tried it, I don't know why, but this pink smoke will not loop in the same way I did this, the planet. Just won't work. I don't know why the end point, the start point, I don't know what's with the plugin. I don't know if there's time component there, but what you can do is you could pre-comp this. So again, now we're talking about that pink glow smoke. Control Shift C, move all attributes to the new composition. Hit okay. Set again the mode to screen. Do the same thing we did on the other layer now. Come to the end, Alt, end bracket, duplicate this layer, bring it over to the end. So the other thing that I just discovered too is that I actually don't need to set any transparencies on these because for some reason, these don't overlap each other. This bottom one has like priority and this top one doesn't unless the bottom one is invisible. And I do not know why that is true. So that's pretty much it for this video. The whole thing now loops perfectly. I guess the last thing I will do is I'll do it to every layer or I'll do it to every composition. I'm gonna add an adjustment layer and add noise to it. Set the noise to like eight, but that's pretty much it. That's how I would create kind of a synth wave looking animation. But um, I hope you did learn something new. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. Check out our Patreon if you want to download the project file. And as always, thanks for watching.